no additional cost. Just my mother shouting at me, she wanted to look. Is that a series? And I said, I had to program. Okay. What we have in common, influenced by the design at, at Xerox Park, at least for David Carling and Steve Jobs. Both were uh, intended to be the revolution to the market. That's pretty well uh, showed in the movie with Clive. The future starts now. <laughs> it started now, 12 days later. <laughs> okay. And the same architecture of the CPU. But the bad choice was, and uh, Sinclair decided to go for the 8-bit bus variant of the 68K. Is the machine by the same, almost same clock rate, right? the Macintosh is 2.5 times faster if you do a small assembly program, maybe a memory loop or something. And the, the same things in costs were not that dramatic. You read the uh, QL today, what Tommy Tevi tells about it. Yeah. In the end, they, with the same amount of money, they could have taken the big chip. Even they got a good price on the 8 bit one. They had 128k of RAM, which was a lot at that time for a non IBM PC. And both had both had the OSA wrong. At the Mac, somehow it seems even the early Mac needed this get to come on with, with the GUI, but everything sits in the wrong. But without the disket he thinks nothing to do. Bad thing about a Mac, if you don't have a diskette, and you get such a unit, you can do nothing. Not even a single line of basic, nothing. No common line, nothing. The QL, out of the box, power on, and you can do at least what you have in your head, in basic. Then, very uncommon, but both had it. Maybe it's coincidence, but why? Both had not, not 320, not 640 pixels, they have both 512. On the X, on the Epsilon, the, uh, the Mac had about double, 300 something, and the QLA 256. So I'm not sure where this is coming from. Maybe on the simpler side, it had to do with the design discussions about the flat screen integrated and flyback time and stuff. I'm not the electronics engineer, but it's somehow funny. And so both? The, the not square pixels be used. Mm. No, that's right. A, a, a circle painted by the graphics routine on the QL, it's on the screen you see it round. Yeah. But if you count the pixels, it's, it's an ellipse. So it's not square pixels. And both had a keyboard which is from the, the optical view. You could say, OK, not bad at all. Both. About the same size. But this one had a very bad image. And it depended on tooling and factory process because the German version is a good keyboard. The early ones were like you have butter and pressing in it. That was just because the rubber which makes the, the lift was, was not of good quality. The, the German one is much harder, it gives you a good response, you know the key is pressed. The early UK versions were like you playing on the piano. And both were marketed with uh, business software. The Macintosh came with Mac Paint and uh, Mac Write, and the QL came with uh, the Sign uh, Office Group. They had differences, and one, uh, they, those differences stayed for years. The Macintosh was monochrome, and it was monochrome in 94, in 95, in 96. It took years until they were the code. But it had the GUI and uh, operated by the mouse. The QL was colored, but you had the command line first. And you had no GUI, but you had a, a full bitmap windowing system. But you had to program it by command line or by applications. And there was no drag and drop and no mouse and, and stuff. Later, as an add-on, and after the QL died, uh, the Tony Tebby did the movie. And since then, we have what we call the pointer environment. 
which is a event-oriented GUI on top of tutors. Okay, Mac had the system software and then a single user application called Finder. The name Finder is still there today, but they have nothing in common anymore. It was single user, single task. That means when you wrote on, on uh, Mac Write and you wanted to make a picture, you had to switch diskettes. Or even if you had a hard disk, you had to exit the program and start the other one. And the QL had multitasking. Uh, and uh, if I had more time to prepare, maybe I will show you tomorrow. With 128K, I can show you very nice multitasking demo. <coughs> I will do it in a QL emulator. Because this is a part that is difficult today. Okay. <coughs> and one strong point of the Mac was the floppy disk. Because this stayed for one and a half decades, it became the industry standard. It was one of the first machines with the three and a half inch. And I showed them earlier those micro drives. Okay, they were maybe better than an audio type when they were new. But 20 years later, I can read all my settings 81 files still, and I stored them very badly, and all the good stored micro drive, I can only read about half. And I need maybe three QLs to get all files out of them. File number one with this QL, file two says it's corrupted, goes to another machine, or file two is okay. So, and we all suffered in that the first QLs were really valuable like that when they were new. German version or the later English were okay, but after a few years, okay. So the Mac became number two in the world. Okay, we have still Windows domination, but on the desktop, second is Mac. Second is Mac. And uh, the QL went uh, in the attics, but uh, we have the community, and uh, some of you take it. Care for him. Okay. Good. Some new slides. Uh, I wanted to do much more for this event, but the event is too early. If you, I tell you when the event should be in five years' time, then I have to dump everything I want. Okay. But I show you a small story, and uh, I'm not the expert on that, but you see in the exhibition a machine with a telephone headset. This one was the result of the work with ICL. So they gave one million pound IT1, and what they got were just the chipsets and the micro drives. And the big company ICL was really using this crappy piece of hardware. And they were using the two chips, and that's, that's about all of it. The, what the bad thing is they uh, didn't use the QL's operating system. Their own. So the machine looks like that. Uh, it has same specs, same clock frequency, same resolution, everything the same, same memory. Complete different physical appearance. A real keyboard, but I, I hate this one. You can, it's like a, a terminal keyboard. Also, the layout has nothing to do with a PC today. You have a start button and recall and stuff like on the BT terminal. And you had software supplied with the machine on ROM. You see on the top, uh, from your side right, you have small ROM cartridges you play in, for example, a telephone answering software, or an accounting software, or the word processor. And it was, uh, the market was executives. So the idea was in Britain to have an every big company for the chief executive, such a unit on the desk to replace his telephone. Because headset here and computer control telephone with answering machine and a model. And the good point was ICL got a strong partner for marketing it, and that was British Telecom. You, you see on, on the exhibition one, one of these is called BT. British uh, Telecom uh, sold them and you could rent them there, like you could rent phone phones. 
and they supported them until 1990-something, so about eight years was the lifespan. And the funny thing, they were used for different other things, like the National Bingo Network in the UK was done with those. And when you look a little bit, the motherboard is looking completely, completely different than the dual ones, but some ch chips were the singular chips. And all, all the bad things, like the clock rate, not 8 megahertz, only 7.5 because of heating, and uh, it's also the case here. There's a big story about them. I don't know much about them. I own three <coughs> units on eBay. The, the cheapest one, about one pound, and the tax expense is about 20. For all the ones I got, postage was much more expensive. And out of those three, Marcus saw them in my lab, only one is working, probably. And now it's something like World Premier, I never heard. Uh, of it before, G E S T Green Street Software in Cambridge, who did the original first design for the QL's operating system, got an OEM license to sell the QL architecture, and they got a project from AAP, Australian uh, Press something, and they did a QL motherboard, which they sold a few hundreds, if not thousands, to Australia which is, in fact, a redesign with the same uh, circuit diagram of a QL with additional interfaces. And sadly, none of the simpler chips are put in, but it's, uh, it's really a QL-compatible system. And the operating system for that also was not QDOS, but their own uh, 68K OS, and now thanks to Marcel and Dilvin, that's Dilvin's card, who went to Marcel and now for some weeks, months, it's here, it will come back in the <laughs> next year. Uh, DST wrote the first design of the operating system and simply decided to use the inverse <coughs> project. Again, blue cards and pink cards. Uh, here it was opposite. The GST were the blue cards, they got the money, maybe one million. It was not used but fully paid. And the engineer who was in charge to supervise them, he did on his free time his own design, and this was chosen. So that's different. That's a development card for the QL where you can use both operating systems. And the one here was used on that one, plus additional ROM sockets for the application, the press application, and uh, it was used in Australia. I had an email chat with uh, Tim Ward, who was the designer of the OS recently, and he said he doesn't remember much, but in the end, maybe it's five pages he wrote. And that's a lot. Okay. So, that was passed, we go to this uh, decade, what happened to the QL inventors? I'm in contact with most of them since the bash is spring, QL is 25. I try to write the complete QL story. But maybe it will never happen. But I collect all the information and uh, verify them against because of the 25 years no, not every word is true. And uh, okay. <coughs> Maybe with the tree on top, I'm in close contact. The under, I got an email from Sinclair Research in April because I was sending them some stuff about the anniversary. I invited Clive as a keynote speaker. <laughs> Didn't get any answer because he's in love. <laughs> okay. So they have a life um, after Sinclair. I'm now in contact with um, uh, Ian Jones. So what's the how can you? Speak? We tell the, the women, Chang. 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 like chain without any chain. Okay. And uh, let's see what she will write me. I want to put her picture here. First question was, do you have a picture of you at work at Sinclair? Because the only pictures which are on the web is she as an author or literate. That's not what we look at. 